Hi everyone, Jessica here from Paper Ink Stamp and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be looking at these Apple Blossom Stamp and Die Sets. These are the uh, Year in Flowers. So we've got 12 sets of stamps and coordinating dies and each of the flowers do represent a uh, month of the year. So these are really, really beautiful. These are the first time that I've uh, had any of these Apple Blossom uh, stamps and dies and I'm really, really impressed the quality and um, to be honest the size of these is absolutely incredible so the first thing I'm going to do is just actually show you the flowers themselves and then we'll sort of go, go through kind of the um the stamp and then like the coordinating die that does come with it so um this comes as a combo it comes as a bundle so you've got then uh, the die on the back and then you've got that uh, stamp, really beautiful there. So we'll do that first, then we'll take a look at the dies and then we'll look at creating a card with one of these flower sets. So all of these uh, flowers, they have got an additional stamp in here, which has got the month and then sort of the official name or, you know, the proper name of the flowers. I'm not gonna try and embarrass myself by trying to pronounce most of them. If I know it, I'll say it. Um, but yeah, so these do come attached to the main um, flower image, but um, I, so for this one, for example, this is one that I've used. I literally just cut it off and you can use those separately if you want to. But so here is January, it's really beautiful. You've got this main, um, I just tried to slide this banner off. So you've got this main flower here, really, really big, and then you have two sort of additional, you've got a smaller one, um, which is, I believe it's just exactly the same as that one, and then this one here is gonna be um, this piece here. So you can then create a little bit of decoupage if you want to, kind of build that image up. Um, and then you do have the coordinating dies for those pieces, but like I said, I'll show you that afterwards. But there's January's, really, really beautiful. Small flowers, um, you've got lots of green leaves, on there um, I think that would look beautiful to really kind of um, go nuts kind of on those leaves and color them in really beautifully then we have got uh, February's flower so again you've got that main image you've got then those two additional flower heads and then again that name and the month We've got the daffodil, so I do know this one because I am Welsh and it is our Welsh flower. So you've got uh, one daffodil there, you've got the two leaves and then you've got the extra daffodil head as well. So if you wanted to build this up a little bit more, of course you could just stamp that multiple times um, and just create a bigger piece. Uh, then we have April. Um, with this one, this is uh, called Stocks. So this is, um, again, let's just try and move this piece. So we've got this really beautiful kind of tall uh, flower here. Then the bit that you can kind of build up is going to be those leaves. And of course, like the other ones, you've got the month and the name there as well. Then we have May. This is the peony. So again, a really fantastic big flower. You've got the big open head. You've got the bud there as well. So again, you could just use that part if that's what you wanted or just use um, the actual head of the flower. And again, then you've got uh, that head as well. Again, if you wanted to build that up um, and that's the coordinating die for that one. Uh, then we have uh, June's flower. So again, um, not as many kind of leaves and things on this one, but so you have the leaves at the bottom. You've got three kind of different stages of the flower opening up, which is really nice. Gives you a little bit of uh, difference there. Again, then you've got the main open head and you've got kind of the one that's starting to open up just there. So you can build that up. Then we have got the July flower. So this um, is my birth month. So this would be my flower um, in here. So you've got nothing sort of layering up, um, but you do have two, two kind of different ones from different angles. So you've got one sort of straight on or you've got one to the side. A flower like this would look really, really beautiful in a vase. If you had a, a vase stencil stamp, something like that. Um, yeah, I think that would look really, really beautiful sort of coming out of there. You could build that up. And again, that would be really, really big. Then we have um, August. This is the Magnolia. I really like this one. I think this is super pretty. Again, if you like sort of Copic colouring, I do enjoy colouring with alcohol markers. A lot of these flowers are going to be perfect for practising if you're um, wanting to kind of get a little bit better, maybe if you're... Um, but there's just so many sort of nooks and crannies in there where you can get the shadows and the highlights. I just think um, these flowers, yeah, are just so, so beautiful and they're just absolutely perfect for this. Then we've got September's flower. Um, so again, then you've got that main kind of um, uh, head of the flower and then you've got the same there so you can build that up. And again, then you do just have those leaves at the bottom. 
we've then got uh, October. So here, once again, you've got the actual stem, you've got the two heads, and again, then you can build those up really beautifully. Alternatively, obviously, you could use these and sort of stamp it again and, you know, just sort of make that stem kind of bigger and have uh, more uh, heads, flower heads in there if you wanted to. Then we have got November's. This is uh, the Camellia. So we've got that main stem, we've got the two flowers again, and then to build that up. So again, really beautiful. The way the, the petals kind of curve over, that's gonna be perfect for um, coloring in and getting those really beautiful shadows in there. Then we have December's. Uh, so again, this is sort of more of a basic flower if you were sort of starting off with your uh, coloring, maybe with alcohol markers, because this is a lot more open. You're not gonna have as many areas to kind of shade. So this would be really great for practicing with um, and just kind of practicing with really basic kind of shadows and highlights. And you could go into something more like this again, where then you have those kind of deeper shadows and things in there. But again, so there you go, that is December's. So if we just take a look uh, at the dies, uh, so again, these come in two separate packs. Um, I was just trying to keep these little bands on them, but they're really difficult to kind of see in that, so um, I might just end up separating them. But on the dies as well, you do have the uh, name of it, so you know exactly which flower it goes with. But I really love this kind of packaging that they have. Um, I think, yeah, it's just, it's really pretty and sort of keeps it together nicely. So if I just take out all of the dies that go uh, with this, so this is uh, five dies. So you've got the main uh, kind of flower die there. So you do have the bits for the stem. Um, and if we just pop this over it, so you can see it's, it is gonna cut all of that uh, out really nicely for you. You have got then, uh, so this one is this one. So then you've got the dies for the individual flower heads as well, like I said before, if you wanted to uh, kind of build these up, it's gonna be so easy to do so. You don't have to worry about fussy cutting. Um, you can just use these coordinate, coordinating dies because like I said, they do go with them. And then you even get then that month with the name uh, as well, which I think is brilliant. So they've really kind of given you everything you need to be able to um, use and really utilize this stamp set, you know, by having that die set there as well. So that is the same for all of these uh, sets. So like I said, if I just show you this one, this is the October. Again, you've got five dies, you've got five stamps in there as well. The main flower, the two heads, the month, and the uh, actual flower name as well. So if you really love your flowers, if you um, have friends who are really into flowers, this is gonna be perfect. So these are available over on the Craft Stash website. I will pop some links in the description box down below. You can find them pitch links over on my blog as well if that's easier for you. Um, so yeah, just check out that section down below. So that was all of the uh, 12 sets there. So now let's take a look at creating a card using one of these stamp and die sets. Okay, so I've decided to go with August and the Magnolia, um, just because I really liked all those kind of um, nooks and crannies in there that we're gonna be able to do some coloring on. But I'm gonna go with this one, but before I do any coloring, because I'm gonna use my alcohol markers, so I've picked out my tri-blends, um, and I'm gonna go with coral. So obviously Magnolia is typically kind of white with just a little bit of color in there, but obviously I don't wanna just do it white, I want to do a color. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go with a coral. I wanted something really light, but my pale pink, I just don't think it's quite pale enough. So I'm gonna go mainly with coral blend and then I can bring in some coral shades if I just want to uh, darken up some of these um, edges a little bit more. But what I wanna do is create a background for this to begin with. So a color that I thought would go quite nice is a little bit of speckled egg. Hopefully that's gonna work nicely with the, the coral in there. Um, so what I've done is picked out a piece of uh, watercolour card. So this is textured. This is by Crafters Companion. I don't really like it um, for kind of regular watercolouring, but this is just going to be kind of a background. So hopefully it will be okay and it will kind of work out. So the first thing I'm going to do is just cut this down because I'm not going to make a, a whole panel. So I don't want to waste the whole piece there. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of this uh, speckled egg distress oxide into the centre of my mat. So I've not really used this speckled egg too much, but it's a really beautiful colour. Then I'm going to take my uh, water spritzer and I'm just going to uh, spritz this up just like so. And I kind of think I want to get kind of try and get a kind of diagonal pattern. I am just going to spritz my card just to get that a little wet and sort of get that colour you know, kind of moving around 
on there, sort of as much as possible. This speckled egg really is a beautiful, beautiful colour. It's kind of that bluey grey colour. This is going to work perfectly, I hope. So it's all about just playing and kind of experimenting. So yeah, I'm going to hit this with my heat gun now just to dry this and we can see what it looks like and whether we want to do another layer. So there's our first layer, kind of uh, quite dry there. I think I might just go in again, yeah, just to get some of these sort of speckles and things. That was really kind of what I was looking for. So I'm going to dry this off now because I really love what that's doing. So there's the background. So I did kind of dunk this in um, again just to get these extra um, sort of little pools and spots down here. I think what I want to do is add maybe just a little bit of Perfect Pearls to this uh, or Cosmic Shimmer, whichever one it is that I've got. Um, and yeah, I think that would just finish and add just a little bit of sparkle to that background. So I've mixed up just a little bit of this. It's the Cosmic Shimmer I've got here. This is the Pearlescent Mica Powder. I've just mixed it with a bit of water and I'm just going to tap it over the background um if you've got a splat box i have got one i've just been a little bit lazy not getting it out you need to be careful because this will manage to get everywhere so there's my background if we just put it in the light you can see that cosmic shimmer mica powder in there really beautiful just sort of helps finish that off what i'm going to do now is just pop this to one side under something heavy just to help flatten it out and then we can look at stamping and coloring in our flower so I've got a piece of Nina cardstock here. This is perfect for using the alcohol markers. I'm gonna pop this into my mini Misty and this will just about fit, yeah, into here. Um, if we just kind of move it around a little bit, we'll be able to get that in perfectly. And I'm gonna stamp this then with some Memento ink, which is alcohol friendly. So there is my stamped image, so that was just one stamp as well, I didn't need to restamp that so you can see just how great the quality of this stamp is. Um, and now what we can do is go ahead and colour in our two flowers. Um, I am thinking for the um, stems and the leaves, I want something that maybe isn't quite as vibrant, um, so I'm going to have to have a look and see what colours I've got um, that I really want to colour that in, but for now we're just going to go ahead and colour in our flowers. So there's my finished piece. I really love how this has come out. Um, I really love using my alcohol markers to colour in um, anything really, but I love colouring flowers because like I said earlier, there's just so many areas where you can create shadows and highlights and things and it's just a really great way of practising. Um, I did have a little bit of trouble with my dull green um, because the lightest colour is starting to run out, but um, I tried to kind of keep those areas sort of light. 
when I am colouring in, I don't tend to be too bothered about following the same kind of light source. If you want it to be super realistic, of course you could have everything kind of following the same light source, but I really don't kind of worry about things like that sort of too much. Um, and I did kind of go back in just to sort of reinforce those shadows and I think it did make a really big difference especially with here I added in that kind of fourth shade just in those real kind of crevices um, and yeah I think it just really helped kind of elevate that a little bit so now we've got this done uh, we can go ahead and cut it out using our coordinating die so I've got a little bit of washi tape to hold this in place so with the die as well what I really love just a little bit of attention to detail I think really makes the difference this middle section here it will cut that out for us as well so we can just line this up really really easily and then I'm gonna run this through my Gemini so there's our die cut so beautifully um, yeah I absolutely love how this one has turned out um, I think it just looks absolutely beautiful okay so I'm going to bring back my panel now so I've had this um, just under something uh, heavy but I am going to die cut this anyway so that will help flatten it out. So I'm going to use, these are the Torn Edge Nesting Dies Rectangles by Hunky Dory. And I wanted to have kind of this, this torn edge. I thought this would look really nice. It might make it look a little bit more, um, I was thinking kind of a little bit more rustic maybe. Um, I'd really love to put these kind of in a frame. If that was the case, you wouldn't really need uh, to have this kind of edge. Um, but I think this is going to look really beautiful with that sort of watercolour background. Um, we've got then those kind of splatters and things I think this is going to look great okay so I've actually changed my mind again which we do do whilst we're crafting I've just die cut that from the next size uh, down because yeah I realized that big size was five by seven and I do have five by seven cards is I'm going to put it on a craft uh, craft card here and I just think that brown with that speckled egg um, yeah, it just looks so beautiful with that coral then as well. That little bit of shimmer in that background. You can't tell me that that doesn't look absolutely fantastic. So I've added some of that scotch foam tape onto the back of this. This is really going to help um, keep it flat as well. And we can pop this onto our card base. I really think that colour and just that shimmer just goes so beautifully with um, that craft. And then we have got our flower. So what I think I might do is just trim the bottom of this. So I'm actually just going to add this um, flat and then we can pop a sentiment onto this and just add a little bit, little bit of dimension with that. Um, I'm not going to be kind of too precious about the tape. Um, so I'm just going to put some pieces just on those flower heads and then uh, on the leaves as well. So for my sentiment, I'm gonna use this Happy Birthday stamp. So this came from the Geo Floral Wreath die set. So this would have come from one of the magazines. So this is what I was talking about um, in my last uh, video, the behind the scenes video, uh, where I had sort of integrated the uh, stamps that I wanted to keep from the magazines into my stash. So if I hadn't done that, I would never have picked out this stamp set to use. So I'm really glad that I've done that. And what I think I might do actually is see if I can get this stamped onto either one of these pieces um, of my cardstock where I created that background, you know, just to kind of keep it kind of the same. So to fit it on this piece of uh, card here, I'm going to have to put it in at a bit of an angle and then I'll probably end up just uh, trimming around it. I'm gonna use my anti-static powder bag, uh, just because we can do a little bit of kind of clear embossing on this, just to add a little extra detail. And that has stamped really beautifully. And then what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of our Wow Clear Matte Doll, uh, and that's just gonna help kind of seal uh, our ink in there, but also then just give it um, a little bit of a raised surface. So there's my heat embossed sentiment. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just trim these out. Um, normally I wouldn't really do this uh, for a sentiment like this. I would normally like to have it in a strip, but for this, obviously I've had to do it at an angle and I think then it would just be nice just to kind of trim around it. 
Okay, so I'm gonna put these on some foam squares. So I think if I was to make this again, I actually think I would just stamp my sentiment straight onto our background. Um, I think that would look really, really beautiful, just kind of there. Maybe I would have um, propped up then the flower, but um, I've just been sort of playing around with the uh, sort of placement of my sentiment and I actually really don't want to uh, cover any of that flower there because I really just love how that looks um, so yeah next time I think I would experiment just stamping uh, the sentiment straight onto that background but let's get some foam pads uh, just onto the back of this sentiment I think that happy uh, is nice and straight as well I'm absolutely loving how this is looking um, I think the last thing I'm going to do is just add some Nouveau drops just in and around this nothing too crazy so I think I'm going to keep it super super simple I'm going to go with my ivory seashell and my clear ones as well I think this ivory is going to go really nice with that cosmic shimmer uh, powder we've popped onto our background and I'm really just going to kind of dart these um, all around the card and I'm going to try and kind of do different sizes so I have sort of smaller ones and bigger ones so we'll do so we've got six of those so um we have got an even number I try to keep them kind of in those triangles we can sort of mix it up then a little bit with these clear ones and yeah, I think that's going to finish that off really beautifully. I absolutely love how this has turned out. And like I said before, these flowers, some of them are absolutely perfect for colouring in. Uh, just because then you do have those big open spaces, like I said. Uh, something like the Torn Edge, it's not something I always think about. Obviously, I've got these dyes here, um, but I don't always use them. And yeah, that then mixed in with that craft uh, card as well, I think just works absolutely perfectly. So let me know in the comment section down below what you think. If you do like it, please give this video a thumbs up. I absolutely love this one. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so, so you don't miss out on any future videos. I will be back with another video on the weekend. We have got the Simply Cards and Papercraft, which is going to be premiering on Sunday at 12 o'clock, so be sure to join me for that one. And there'll be a video on Saturday as well, so again, look out for that one. So again, you will find links to these products that I've used in the description box down below and over on my blog as well. So that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching and happy crafting.